Rapid train number 5418 is behind schedule just outside Osaka, Japan. The driver is trying to make up lost time. The train enters a curve at 116 kilometers an hour, 46 kilometers over the speed limit. Seconds later, it's airborne. Monday, the tail end of rush hour. For more than 650 passengers aboard rapid train number 5418, the morning commute ends in disaster. The train derails at more than 100 kilometers per hour and smashes into an apartment building in Amagasaki, two stations short of Osaka. It's hard to believe that anyone inside the first two carriages could have survived. But this man has. Shortly after the crash, Kyochi Yoshida, a 39-year-old video engineer, regains consciousness. When I was awake, I was like, When I woke up, the world in front of my eyes was foggy. It could be because I wasn't fully conscious. I couldn't recognize the place I was trapped in. I mean, I saw a concrete ceiling above the window of the train. And I thought, what am I doing here? I couldn't recognize the situation. But I knew I was in a dangerous place. Yoshida was traveling in the lead carriage, which hit the apartment building with such force that it's now buried deep inside the basement parking garage. The first rescuers arrive at 9.24 a.m., just six minutes after the crash. Nothing could have prepared them for what they see inside the wreckage. Kyochi Yoshida remembers the moments just before the crash. He was traveling to his work at a local TV station when the train suddenly shifted violently. I was imagining the train would fall on its side. And while I was thinking about it, it actually started to happen. I was thrown to my right, toward the front of the train. Then I realized that I was facing backwards. I could see down toward the rear part of the train, and while I was falling, I was losing consciousness. All around him, underneath him, are the bodies of strangers. Then he spots something familiar lying right on top of him. And then when I looked at my chest, there was my laptop computer I'd been using just minutes before, hanging nicely right there in front of me. Yoshida believes that the gap between the laptop and his chest may have saved his life, giving him just enough space to keep breathing.
午前9時18分ちょうどラッシュアワーが終わる頃 JR 西山線で列車事故が起こりましたこの電車には650 The news of Japan's worst rail disaster since 1963 hits the airwaves within minutes of the crash Momoko Suzuki is at work when the news breaks. She's horrified by the report of numerous casualties, especially since her husband and her daughter Junko often ride that train. The rescuers soon realize that 20 to 30 dead is an optimistic prediction. In the first hour alone, they discovered dozens of bodies, most of them in the two front carriages. Hundreds of injured are taken to nearby hospitals, and many are still trapped in the depths of the wreckage. Kyochi Yoshida has injuries from head to foot. A broken pelvis, broken ribs, severe whiplash. Even more serious, his legs are trapped in the wreckage. They're squeezed to the point where there's a danger of getting crush syndrome. A deadly condition that can set in as early as half an hour after entrapment. It's critical that he gets medical treatment before his legs are released or his vital organs could shut down. Saisakai Shiga Hospital is 70 kilometers from the crash site, home base for a remarkable medical specialist, Dr. Takanobu Hase. He and his team are prepared to treat conditions such as crush syndrome. They work right at the crash site while patients are still trapped. His second in command, Dr. Shinji Akatomi, has heard that there are already many rescuers at the site. Even so, he knows this kind of disaster calls for experts who know how to work in confined spaces. The key is to get to the crash site in time. I believe that the rescuers would need us that we'd be able to help them. Meanwhile, Momoko Suzuki tries to find out if any family members were on board train number 5418. I worried if my husband had made it to work. I called his office and they told me he's in. I was relieved. But then I thought, maybe Junko is on that train. Momoko's daughter Junko is a 30-year-old artist. She takes this train five times a week to get to a design course at a nearby technical school. Momoko calls Junko's mobile phone. She prays it will be answered. The team from Saisakai Shiga Hospital races the 70 kilometers to the crash site. Dr. Takanobu Hase has years of experience in emergency medicine. The massive Kobe earthquake of 1995 was a turning point in his career. Hase was shocked to see many people die in the days following the quake because they didn't receive on-site treatment for crush syndrome. Ever since then, He's taken a special interest in confined space medicine.
The team uses this time to mentally prepare themselves for the tasks that lie ahead. Dr. Hase reminds his team to give the trapped passengers fluid resuscitation before they are released. He reminds them if they get it wrong, people will die. A young intern, Hiroaki Nagata, has joined the team. He's never set foot on a disaster site before. It was my first time, so I was just going to do exactly as the senior doctors ordered. At the time, I had no idea what I could do for anyone. I was very nervous, very nervous. The senior doctors offer encouragement. I told Dr. Nagata that at the disaster site everybody will be agitated and rushing around. I said that we have to prepare ourselves to be calm. That's what I told him. At the crash site, passengers are still trapped in the wreckage of the first two carriages. The rescuers run out of stretchers to move the wounded. A few survivors are trapped so deep in the rubble that the rescuers won't even discover them for several hours. One of them is a 19-year-old student who had been standing at the front of carriage number one. The crash hurled him forward into the driver's cabin. The young man is trapped alongside the dead driver, pinned from the waist down. His limbs are under terrible pressure. He's conscious enough to make contact with his family. He tells them that he may not live long enough to be rescued. Don't give up. Just hold on. Hang in there. Further back in carriage number one, Kyochi Yoshida fights his fear and pain by encouraging the person next to him. I was holding somebody's hand for quite some time. My mental state was not normal. It took a long time to realize that the person whose hand I was holding had already passed away. This morning, Yoshida changed his routine. Instead of riding at the back of the train, as he normally did, he sat in the very front carriage. Car number one is the most mangled of the train's seven carriages. It was really, really painful. I was so preoccupied by the pain that there was no room left to think about how am I going to survive. Momoko Suzuki calls other family members to see if they have heard from Junko. I'm trying to reach Junko, but there's no answer. Oh. Oh. She learns that Junko was in touch with her sister earlier that morning. That day the accident happened, on the 25th, I had to leave home before Junko. I usually leave home at 
It had never happened before, but Junko got up and came downstairs, still in pajamas, and she said, she said goodbye, and she said goodbye again. I was wearing shoes already, and I remember I was wondering, why is she saying goodbye twice today? That was the only conversation we had that morning. There was a long weekend approaching, so my daughters had been exchanging text messages about having some dinner party. They were exchanging messages at the time and suddenly it was cut off. It made me realize she was most probably on that train and I started to feel very panicky. By now, emergency workers have ferried more than 400 injured passengers to hospital. At the disaster site, they are now concentrating on body recovery. After fighting traffic and roadblocks, Dr. Hase's team finally arrives. They hope they haven't arrived too late. The first thing I saw was a horrendous sight. This huge train bent into a V-shape, hanging from the apartment building. It was a much bigger accident than we'd imagined. As they approach the wreckage, team members check victims for vital signs. All are dead. But Hase's team know from experience that there might still be survivors inside. Four hours had already passed since the accident, but things were still chaotic. If anyone was still trapped inside, they'd need confined space medicine. Also, rescuers might have been injured in secondary accidents. That's what I had in mind when we arrived at the site. Inside carriage number one, emergency workers have removed some of the bodies. But they cannot release Yoshida. Crush syndrome is now a real risk. When muscles are under intense pressure, the damaged cells disintegrate. If the pressure is released, Potassium and a protein called myoglobin flood through the bloodstream. Elevated myoglobin levels can cause acute kidney failure, and increased potassium concentration can lead to cardiac arrest. Without Dr. Hase's help, Yoshida could die. Doctor! We need a doctor! As Dr. Hase's team enters the destroyed parking garage, they are stunned by the destruction around them. The first carriage of the train was crushed into the parking space of the apartment building. We went in there. 
I remember it was very hot and smelled of gas, because fuel was leaking from the cars in the parking space. Reinforcement steel was exposed, and there was shattered glass everywhere. Iron frames were bent and the edges were as sharp as knives. I felt it was very dangerous as soon as I entered. It looked like all those things could fall on you at any time. Also, evaporated gasoline could catch fire and explode at any moment. Inside the demolished car park, there is not enough oxygen and too much carbon monoxide, a toxic combination. In this confined space, rescuers also risk contamination and infection from the blood and other body fluids of the victims. The temperature inside the wreckage has hit 40 degrees Celsius. But Dr. Hase and his team persist, carefully checking vital signs of each body in their path. Finally, Dr. Hase comes face to face with Kyochi Yoshida. I recognized him as a doctor the moment I saw him. And I thought, oh, the doctor has arrived. He was providing triage very prudently, taking so much time to make sure. I'd never met a single doctor who first introduced himself, so I was very surprised, and at the same time, I was deeply moved by it. Dr. Hase realizes Yoshida's leg is trapped and under great pressure. When Dr. Hase approached Mr. Yoshida, he assessed what kind of situation Yoshida was in. His legs were trapped and he was starting to feel numb. Dr. Hase was thinking about crush syndrome. Hase knows that Kyochi Yoshida needs to be put on an intravenous drip right away. But Yoshida is confused by pain, shock, and stress, so he doesn't understand why he needs this kind of treatment. The doctor explains that intravenous fluids will help prevent crush syndrome and possibly save Yoshida's life. He first told me something like, I am cutting your clothes. Even though my clothes at the time were all crumpled up and torn, he excused himself first before using the scissors. And I was so touched by how polite he was. The intravenous fluids help flush out the myoglobin and potassium that will otherwise flood into the bloodstream as soon as his leg is released. The treatment will help prevent kidney and heart failure. Fluid resuscitation also reduces the possibility that he will go into shock once released. Momoko Suzuki has called all the local hospitals. Her daughter Junko isn't at any of them. Fearing the worst, she tries the last place any parent wants to visit. I called many hospitals, but I couldn't get information about Junko from any of them. So I realized there's a possibility that Junko is already dead and at the morgue. We were not allowed to go into the actual morgue to see the bodies. We had to wait in a room, and if there was a positive identification, 
Then we could go into the morgue. There were Polaroid photos of the dead people that I had to go through to check if Junko was among them. At the crash site, rescuers are still finding victims. More than five hours after the accident, they discover a young woman deep inside carriage number two, who matches Momoko's description of her daughter, Junko. Dr. Hase's intravenous treatment has dramatically increased Yoshida's chances of survival. But five hours after the crash, his left leg still remains completely trapped. And I was thinking, if the inside of my body was damaged, drinking water could cause problems. But I couldn't stand it, so I took some water. And also, it was unbelievably humid, so I asked them to pour the water from their bottles over my head. <coughs> the pain is excruciating, but it will now be less risky to release him from the wreckage. Although there was no guarantee that my left leg could be pulled out of the rubble, I felt relieved somehow. The left leg was so hard to pull out that someone, I think it was the leader of the rescue team, said, if this situation doesn't change, it's not looking good. The rescuers are having a hard time figuring out which foot is Yoshida's. Tangled in the mountain of rubble with his left leg are the limbs of dead bodies. They asked me many times, is this it? Is this it? While they were tapping shoes. But I couldn't feel anything. I actually thought that my shoe was being tapped but that my foot might be partially dead. I was worried. Yoshida wants to call his family, but can't find his phone. So I put my hand in my pocket, and there was no phone. Then I realized that I was holding the phone in my left hand at the moment of the accident, and that it must have been thrown somewhere. I thought about asking the rescuers to lend me their phone, but it didn't seem that my left leg was going to be released. It occurred to me to call my family, to let them hear my voice and let them know I was still alive. But then I also thought that if I didn't pull through, they might be devastated. So I decided to call them after I was released. Yes! Yes! After 10 minutes, the rescuers have finally identified Yoshida's foot. As his leg is released from the crushing pressure, Yoshida experiences a strange sensation. 
I felt a strong pounding in my leg. The condition was such that I didn't even know if the information from the tip of my foot would be going from here or come back to here. I couldn't actually feel whether my leg had been released or not. I'm gonna roll him over gently. Blood rushes into his left leg, which increases the risk that Yoshida will go into shock. Meanwhile, other rescuers working in a different part of the wreckage have finally managed to free Junko Suzuki. They ease her out of the rubble of carriage number two and bring her motionless body to Dr. Akitomi. He checks for any signs of life. Miss Junko arrived in front of me. I was surprised because she was covered in oil and I couldn't tell whether she was breathing or whether her heart was beating. I opened her mouth a bit and found it was filled with tiny pieces of glass. I did not have any equipment with me. I just had two ballpoint pens. I put one of them between her tightly closed teeth and forced her mouth open. Then, using the other pen, I removed the glass from her mouth. Dr. Akatomi tries to get any kind of response from Junko. His efforts fail. He realizes she's in a coma. Her level of consciousness was very low, and there was the possibility of head injury. Also, her blood pressure was very weak. Junko is also in shock because there isn't enough blood and oxygen flowing to her brain, heart, kidneys, and liver. So these organs are in danger of shutting down. Dr. Hase and Dr. Akatomi ride in the ambulance with Junko, fighting to keep her alive. Her consciousness level dropped dramatically. It was a bad situation. Dr. Hase quickly gave her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, and I went to get a breathing aid. Dr. Hase was someone I really respected. He was very understanding. And he was my mentor. Dr. Hase manages to revive Junko. Her condition is so critical that her only hope is an airlift to hospital. Dr. Akatomi and Dr. Hase decide they must take the journey with her. As rescuers lift Yoshida out of his prison and into the light of day, he's overcome by a flood of conflicting emotions. I was moved, 
Not just because my legs were released, but also because the rescue people were working so hard. It took five hours and I was finally taken outside. I was so grateful to my rescuers that I ended up having tears in my eyes. I actually felt like staying there a little bit longer. That's how much we bonded in that small space. It was a real, special atmosphere. Thank you so much. It was really cold, and I started to have a chill. Yoshida is suffering from shock. There is also still a chance of crush syndrome. Even though he was treated on site, doctors will have to watch closely for signs of kidney problems in the next few days. By late afternoon, many rescuers have left the accident site certain that there are no more survivors. But Dr. Hase's team isn't so sure. After they've delivered Junko to hospital, they return to the wreckage. I'd heard that in other countries, there have been quite a few cases where people were rescued 24 hours, even 48 hours later. I was not sure that any survivors would still be trapped. But I wanted to help in case someone was found alive. Just after 4 p.m., rescuers hear several voices from the very front of carriage number one. Among them is the 19-year-old student whose lower body is pinned beside the lifeless driver. He feels pressure in his chest. Breathing is difficult. <laughs> Both legs were trapped. He couldn't feel anything, couldn't move his legs at all. When I heard that, I knew there was a chance he would have crush syndrome, that if he did not get treatment for it, he may not survive. The team's intern, Dr. Hiroaki Nagata, works his way toward the driver's demolished cabin. It was a very small space. The train was crushed in like that, and there were a lot of dead people, dead bodies. It's not a nice way of saying it, but they looked like bats hanging down. Dr. Nagata prepares to treat the young man for crush syndrome and encourages him to hang on for a little longer. He actually sometimes said, I might just give up. When he said that, I told him, don't be a fool, that rescuers are trying to get to him. So until they reach you, until they save you, you can't give up. That's what I told him. It was a very awkward way to be giving treatment. I knew that if I failed to give him IV fluid, he was going to die, so I did my best. You're gonna make it. It's okay. Junko's mother has found out that there's a badly injured survivor in Osaka General Hospital who could be Junko. Oh. 
まあ、あのもう探さなくていいと思いました。I felt my search is over. I have found her. Junko is still breathing, but only just. Her doctor estimates that her chance of survival is a mere 1%. まずあのヘリコプターで運ばれたっていうことをまず一番最初に聞きました。で、脳の。The doctor told me that Junko was brought here by helicopter and that there was an emergency operation in her stomach area that they had to do without permission in order to save her life. 事前に病院として命を助けるためにあのした処置ですっていう診断書とともにそういう説明を受けました。Junko has suffered a severe blow to the head. Her brain tissue swelled, creating great pressure inside her skull. This pressure compromises blood flow and oxygen that nourishes the brain. After hours in this condition, it's very likely any damage could be permanent. まあ、一応あの手術してあの処置は一応あの全部するだけのことは処置はしましたからあとはあの。They'd done all they could.The doctor told me that we'd have to see what happened over the next three days.That there could be brain damage. もう売ってるので。Dr. Hase's team works into the night to help save the lives of several remaining trapped passengers. All are suffering from crush syndrome and need on site treatment. The young man from the driver's cabin is the last survivor pulled out alive, 22 hours after the crash. In all, 107 passengers died in the crash, 555 have been injured. Many severely. Kyochi Yoshida's injuries are so serious that he stays in the hospital for more than two months. He is deeply moved by the team that volunteered and traveled 70 kilometers to save his life. If I didn't get treatment, I might have died or ended up on a kidney machine. If I'd been rescued before Dr. Hase treated me, it's likely I would have ended up with crush syndrome. It took five hours to rescue me. But that means I was treated by Dr. Hase. There was luck in a very unlucky situation. He wrote a book about his life and death experience on train number 5418. After the accident, Junko Suzuki lies in a coma for many months. Her family keeps a constant vigil at her bedside. I never, I couldn't accept the fact that she's going to die. I always had it in my mind that she will be okay and she will regain consciousness. One day, six months after the accident, Junko finally wakes up. Oh, Junko! Junko, you're awake! Mom, get up, go! 今まで頑張ってつきあの見守ってきて。I was taking care of Junko all the time. I was so happy that I was her mother when she called my name. 病院の人っていうかあの周りの入院患者にあの世話をしに来てはった。The nurses at the hospital heard her voice with me. They were actually crying. 
They were so happy for me. Junko did suffer some brain damage, but after intensive rehabilitation, she is back home with her family. She's become something of a national hero. Support has poured in from across Japan. I was really relieved that I was alive. It was a miracle that Junko Suzuki regained her consciousness. A series of miracles. Dr. Akatomi often goes to visit Junko and her family, even though he now works three hours away in Tokyo. Junko's life changed forever the day train number 5418 went off the rails. But she hasn't lost her artistic dreams. I've got good eyesight, and I've got capable hands, so I'd like to find some kind of job using my hands. I want to be an illustrator, or something like that. She was my daughter, but for 30 years we'd never really been that close. I've been given the chance to raise my daughter again. We can actually start again. I feel that. I've started to notice what love really means. 